it's my big pleasure to uh, announce and invite the stage uh, the national coordinator uh, for the Czech uh, uh, Clavin Consortium, Baba Hajčova, and also the head of the Institute for Formal Applied Linguistics, uh, Barbara Hladka, and uh, Martin Popper, who is the leader of uh, the, yesterday we remember one of the two winning teams. So I'd like to invite this three representatives of the uh, Clavin of the Czech Clarin uh, community, please. Well, uh, thank you very much for the uh, for the thought in the program. Uh, we are really happy that we can present uh, some of our work. Uh, welcome to Prague again. Uh, I'm sorry to say that the weather stopped to cooperate with us. But um, at least we have prepared one nice picture so that those who were not able to visit the town, they can see it uh, on, the, on the screen. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Uh, just uh, for your orientation in the picture, uh, in the right hand corner, you see this uh, wonderful church. And the location of our institute is just, just side by side to, to the church. So that much about the uh, topographic uh, information. And in the rest, uh, there will be two short presentations of the work uh, we have been doing or are doing. Uh, as Marte said, uh, the first one will be given by uh, the head of our uh, institute, Barbara Hratka, and then there will be a short presentation of the system which, uh, to our great pleasure and honor, has been awarded uh, Stephen Crowett uh, Award. Okay. Well, thank you, Eva, for a nice introduction. Good morning to everyone. And my task is to say a few words about uh, Linda Claria CZ. Um, Linda uh, is a Czech large research infrastructure uh, that serves both national and international research communities in the areas of language technologies, arts, and humanities. This timeline shows the, let's say, the most important dates uh, in a period of almost 20 years of building of our uh, center. Uh, we can see that uh, Lindat uh, is a virtual node of two European research infrastructures, namely Clarin Eric and Daria Eric. Uh, we provide more details uh, about our infrastructure in uh, one of the chap chapters in, in the Clarion anniversary, anniversary volume. We are slowly heading to the end of uh, this year, and uh, we are a little bit worried uh, what will happen to Linda after 2022. Uh, wh why? Question is why. Uh, the, Czech Ministry of Education, Sports and Youth organized in 2020 and uh, 2021 an international peer review uh, to evalu peer review evaluation of, uh, of the large infrastructures included in the roadmap of infrastructures in the Czech Republic. And the purpose of, of uh, this evaluation uh, was to get an um, independent expert data uh, for the government of the Czech Republic uh, to make decisions on financing of uh, research infrastructures from public funds uh, after 2022. Uh, Lindat uh, got the best uh, best mark possible, uh, five of five. Uh, that's it. That is definitely a very good message. Uh, however, uh, the the government's current proposal is to fund fund uh, only uh, seventy five percent of the proposed budgets for the following four years. Right. So that's the reason. Or, we haven't signed uh, the agreement yet. So that's the reason why we are a little bit uh, nervous what will happen on uh, January 1st, 2033. Uh, in the document uh, that we uh, submitted for, for the international evaluation, 
uh, we presented a number of uh, areas uh, where we want to expand our activities. And one of them, I would say maybe the, the main one, is to add four new partners uh, from the European Holocaust uh, Research Infrastructure CZ Consortium. So currently there are th 13 partners in, in our consortium. So uh, then uh, we, expect, we expect 17 partners. And uh, the, the, the new partners uh, will be, let's say, supervised uh, by the uh, or by the Masaryk Institute and archives of the Czech Academy of Sciences. Uh, at the end, we plan to become a virtual node of one more uh, research infrastructure. Uh, in this case, the the uh, Ihre Ihre Eric uh, research infrastructure. Uh, at the same time, it means the expansion of offerings of the Center for Visual uh, History Malach. It is a center uh, that is a part of, of uh, our institute. And uh, this center provides access to, to digital video testimony archive. And uh, we expect that the new four partners will bring uh, not only oral resources, but uh, written materials and research of the and the results of the of the of the previous research into into the consortium. Uh, Lindat has been uh, developing a repository uh, that is current compatible and that is based on the open source uh, solution uh, DSpace. Uh, we and uh, no doubt that uh, that uh, it presents the backbone of of, of the repository. Uh, we follow the fair principles and uh, we design it or organize it as open in terms of data licenses and uh, user registration as as possible. Uh, so for for instance, uh, you can see that uh, there are almost four. 1500 uh, data items uh, that include that include both metadata and data in other words uh, that they are file, files to download uh, we are also interested in the number of uh, registered users. We require registration only when uh, uh, users want to submit data or sign or sign um, licenses and uh, or what we are also interested in, the number of, of downloads of items that require signing licenses. Uh, Lindat is, uh, is an infra infrastructure not only for, for language data, uh, but, oh, no, okay. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, I'm still speaking about data. Yeah, uh, I want to say that the LINDAT uh, stands for linguistic data, uh, but there are uh, non-linguistic data items in the repository as well. For instance, uh, there are uh, available collections created by the National Film Archive, uh, one of uh, our partners. Bohumil Vesely's Gallery of Famous Men and Women is, uh, is one of them. Uh, Bohumil Vesely was a remarkable person who dedicated his life to film collecting and uh, uh, to amateur film production. And uh, this collection consists of almost 800 uh, short films or clips uh, that uh, capture famous figures of uh, Czechoslovakia public life in the first half of, uh, of the 20th century. Uh, Users uh, can can download the movies in the best quality as well as in, in the low quality. And even more, they can preview the movies while browsing, uh, browsing the, the data item. Uh, the Munich Agreement is another collection of uh, 34 uh, pieces of uh, real life uh, ma ma material. And uh, it... Um, it focuses on on uh, on political and uh, social events that took place 
shortly before that took place in Czechoslovakia, shortly before the Munich Agreement was signed. So mainly they, the, the movies were made in 1937 and 1938. Uh, Lindat is, is, uh, is an infrastructure not only for, for data, but for language uh, services as well. Uh, currently, there are uh, 22 services available, and uh, in the in the in fact, in the main sets of of uh, services like uh, machine translation and UD pipe tool for for morphologic and syntactic uh, processing of text based on on uh, universal dependencies framework, uh, they these services represent uh, hundreds of of services, in fact. If we take into account every language, every language pair, or every language model into account. And I want to highlight that uh, uh, the, the models for the services are available in the repository as well. Right. So for instance, here you can see the UTPI models trained on the, uh, on the universal dependencies collection uh, 2.10 so is available in, in, in Linda's repository. Uh, naturally, uh, we are interested in, uh, in the traffic, in service traffic. We ask questions, uh, which tool or which service is uh, the most popular, how many users use our services, uh, which IP addresses over, overload our servers. And uh, that's the reason why, besides the language services, uh, we have been developing the Lindat billing system to, to monitor Lindat, uh, Lindat services usage. Uh, thanks to this system, we have a rather big set of statistics uh, that we use, for example, for, uh, for issuing uh, service issues for our commercial partners. Uh, speaking about uh, commercial use of our tools or services, license agreements uh, represent uh, one of the way how we make our tools available. For example, uh, we had an agreement with the trust company uh, that use our tools uh, in the system of automated uh, responses to lawyers' requests uh, addressed to, to address to banks and to know whether a given person is a client of, of, uh, of the banks and if yes, uh, which products she or he uh, had been had been using. Uh, Historically, uh, machine translation uh, has been a flagship of, uh, of research being done in the, in the Lindat's uh, host institute of, the, of formal and applied linguistics, even uh, before the institute was established. Uh, as, uh, as far as my knowledge goes, the very first um, machine translation system between English and Czech was developed at the beginning of, of uh, 1980s. And uh, the release of, of the mobile application for Czech and Ukrainian machine translation uh, was very was a significant milestone in, in the historical context I, I, I mentioned. And uh, uh, it is a milestone that, that motivates us uh, to use the name Charles Translator for machine translation systems uh, that we are developing in our institute with the support of, of Lindat, Lindat Clarin. And at the same time, uh, we want to express our affiliation uh, to Charles University. So to, to conclude my part, uh, let me congratulate to, uh, to our U4U team uh, on uh, winning the, the Stephen Crower Award. And uh, I would like to ask Tomáš, Okay, so Martin will be presenting uh, or will be presenting more details about U4U system uh, online. Good morning. Uh, I'm very sorry, some very unexpectedly I cannot come today. I hope you can hear me 
uh, yes, uh, the uh, remote host uh, knock. So um, next slide, please. Uh, I wanted to tell you how uh, this uh, started. So uh, on the 1st of March, I received the following email from a colleague of mine, Jindřich Libovický, who was there also yesterday. Hi folks, shouldn't we build a Czech Ukrainian translator and I put it on Lindat? Many people use Google Translate that pivots to English and a direct translator would be surely better. So but I admit my response was quite skeptical. Like I know it's a lot of work to get better and we should be really careful. This is a, a serious situation with the refugees and uh, we should be careful not to cause more harm than good. Uh, because, uh, well, next slide, please. Um, there were some uh, reasons to like, we had quite a lot of experience as you have heard with uh, machine translation at our institute and I personally uh, developed an English Czech uh, neural machine translation system called Qubit and we published this uh, evaluation in a blind manual evaluation we compared with the quality of uh, translation by professional uh, translation agency and we focus on the left side on adequacy where it was evaluated as uh, slightly but significantly better that means that the translation, um, uh, the sense was preserved more accurately. And we focused also on fluency on the right hand side. And there it was uh, substantially worse than the human translation. Uh, so, next slide, please. If you want to know more, there is a paper about it. So, we call it somehow comparable to human professionals. But that was English Czech, where we are working on this translation direction for years and we have uh, millions, uh, tens of millions of sentences, parallel training data created. So next slide, please. What about back to the Ukrainian? So in the end, we were able to build the system in 12 days and we organized or my colleagues organized a hackathon to develop a new front end because I was aware that it's not only the quality of the uh, translation itself, which makes the quality of the whole translation service and the user experience. And we needed a new web front end and also the mobile application. So next slide. Um, in two weeks, we were able to release that Ukrainian Czech and Czech Ukrainian translator for public. And that was only thanks to the great support of Linda Clarin and the IT that all the GPUs were available and so on. And um, next slide, please. Uh, uh, then in April, we improved the quality of the models. And in May, we released uh, an Android application, which was also very helpful to the users because uh, it uh, has the voice input and uh, Yes, next slide, please. Uh, then um, we uh, included the Ukrainian Czech language pair in the WMT shared task on machine translation. So both industries and academic could participate. And now we have 11 systems uh, for these two directions and we are running a manual evaluation to know what are the qualities of those systems. And then advantage is that uh, we collected uh, sentences from the users who gave us consent to improve the um, translation quality with their sentences. So the sentences are authentic sentences which were translated uh, by this Charles translator. Next slide, please. Uh, so once again, what convinced me to get involved in this project and we'll spend a lot of time with this. So why should we develop our own machine translation for Ukrainian Czech? Why not to use Google, Microsoft, uh, DeepL and so on? So one, we did of course a survey already in March of the quality and the quality was very low. So we expected that the quality will improve over time. So for example, in few weeks ago, DeepL uh, added Ukrainian to the uh, language to their translator. It was not there in March, uh, but we also hope that we can do it faster and uh, so provide at least something to the users. Also, we had some hopes that uh, 
our plan was to do direct translation, so not translate it via English. And uh, as I will show you, there are some advantages for the quality of such direct translation. We also collected the in-domain test set so we could better evaluate. And we were in contact with uh, many of the refugees and humanitarian organizations uh, caring about them. So we had a lot of feedback. And we also offer a free API via Lynn.Clarin. So if either via API or even uh, for some sensitive data, it, our models can be installed um, on the premise. And the screenshot shows an example of an organization, uh, Pomahe Ukraine, which is a hub for or um, support of to the refugees in the Czechia. Uh, so people both uh, looking for help or offering help of many kinds, translation, travel, medical, and so on. Uh, so if they if the offers are not already translated by the users, it's translated automatically via our API. Next slide, please. Uh, here is an example, and one of the special needs of or the feedback was that, for example, school kids uh, or like the refugees cannot read Latin script uh, fluently now. So it, we show a phonetic transcription of the Czech translation into like in Cyrillic. And that was one of the feedbacks. And this uh, sentence, uh, Zara Zavaya Hotova shows and well this means uh, the application form um, or um, declaration is now ready and it can be translated quite easily correctly into Czech. Next slide. Uh, but uh, in other uh, translators uh, that translate uh, or through English it may not be so easy because uh, the application form Zava is translated as application into English, which is then translated as computer app into Czech, which is completely wrong and misleading. And uh, it's not easy to get out of this problem while still translating uh, through English. Next slide. Uh, and for the opposite direction from Czech to English, I have here an uh, example uh, where the first two sentences say I am ill and what about you but the distinction is in the uh, whether the speaker uses the feminine or masculine gender and whether the addressee is addressed with formal or informal voice like the TV distinction and this is also difficult to preserve for translators uh, which don't translate via English while on the screenshot the Charles translator gets this distinction correctly another uh, noticeable fact is that the uh, phonetic transcription follows the Czech phonetic rules. So it's, I even if not, I cannot read Cyrillic, I see that it's ja, chvora, ave. Next slide, please. Uh, other translators also show phonetic transcription, but using English phonetic rules, which is perhaps not suitable for Czech users. And uh, here they cannot uh, distinguish uh, the gender of the uh, speaker and the formulated TV distinction and more importantly the medicine in the uh, third sentence is translated as narcotiki perhaps because of drugs. Next slide please. Even DPL while the third sentence gets correctly cannot distinguish the first two sentences. Next slide. Um, and Microsoft translation is somehow uh, clever. It uh, preserves the ambiguity, except for the formality, but the gender, the translation is something like, I don't feel well. Next slide. Uh, these are statistics. So we can see that the uh, amount of translations from uh, Ukrainian to Czech is still growing. And these are thousands of translations per week uh so there are millions of sentences translated in total and um next slide please i would like to uh, thank you and as local organizers then uh, say that prague is a nice city we have also interesting street art you can find here and uh just uh it's not that we are helping ukraine but that ukraine is helping the whole europe Thanks. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation um, uh, of, of Linda, but also thank you very much for this initiative and application build. Very good examples.